Hello, everyone. Uh, so my name is Neha, and uh, I work at MIT. I lead a group there called the Digital Currency Initiative. Uh, we focus on cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology research. Um, and we're here today to tell you about some research that we did uh, involving a cryptocurrency called IOTA. So what is IOTA? You might not have heard of it. It's actually a top 10 cryptocurrency. Um, it, a, few, as of a few days ago, it had a valuation of about $2.8 billion, but there's been a little bit of a dip in cryptocurrencies, so it's a little lower right now. Um, they have a lot of partnerships with large companies. Um, for example, Bosch has purchased, in their own words, a significant number of IOTA tokens. Uh, Volkswagen is releasing an IOTA-based product in 2019. Now, the idea behind IOTA is that um, it's based on something called a tangle, uh, which is a directed acyclic graph of transactions. It doesn't use a linear sequence of blocks like most other blockchains in cryptocurrencies. Um, and another thing that's unique about IOTA is that they actually wrote their own hash function called curl. A couple more basics about IOTA that you need to know in terms of terminology to get the rest of this talk. Um, so instead of a transaction, um, these are the Bitcoin words on the left and on the right are the IOTA words. Uh, instead of a transaction, payments are called bundles. And uh, the currency is valued a little bit differently than Bitcoin. So again, as of a day or so ago when we wrote these slides, Bitcoin was around $7,000 a coin. Um, IOTA was around 87 cents for a million coins or a million IOTA. Um, but, you know, something else that's unique about IOTA and really interesting is that it uses what's called balanced ternary. So uh, instead of bits and bytes, which are base two, zeros and ones, IOTA actually uses trits and trites. So um, it's negative one, zero, and one. That's the representation that it uses. So why did we decide to take a look at this cryptocurrency at all? Well, it actually was sort of an accident. So in addition to me on that slide are two of my colleagues, Michael Casey and Taj Dryja. And uh, one day Michael came to us because he had gotten this email. Uh, and this email claimed that there was this amazing new cryptocurrency invented that solved all of the problems in cryptocurrencies. It was scalable. It didn't have any fees. It was totally decentralized. Um, and so he was asking us if this was for real, if this was, you know, if it was possible for this to happen. Now, my colleague Taj immediately replied no. But the thing is, um, Taj is a very grumpy person, so he doesn't like very much to begin with. And he was saying no a lot recently. And so I said to him, Taj, you can't just say that everything sucks. You have to actually explain exactly why it sucks. And so he said, fine. And he went off and he looked at the code. And one of the first things he noticed was the custom hash function called curl. Um, Taj was having lunch with my colleague Ethan, who's going to uh, come up for the rest of the talk soon. And uh, Ethan enjoys breaking hash functions for fun. Um, so he showed Ethan this hash function. And Ethan was delighted and responded, there goes my weekend. Okay, so what exactly is our attack? The basics of our attack um, are the following. Bob signs a payment where he gets two million US dollars worth of IOTA and Eve gets almost nothing. Eve then forges Bob's signature on a different payment where she gets two million dollars worth of IOTA and Bob gets almost nothing. Now, what's really important about this attack is that it takes place in what is called a chosen message attack setting. What does that mean? That means that Eve gets to create the payment that Bob ultimately signs. So Eve gets to sort of create this payment and put it in front of him. Bob checks it out and signs it. Um, a note on impact and disclosure. We are not sharing brand new attacks here today. We actually did this work a year ago, and we disclosed our findings to the IOTA developers. Um, they very quickly deployed mitigations for them, 
And so it's important to note that the signature forgery attacks that we are presenting today in this talk no longer impact IOTA's security. And in the course of creating and conducting this attack, we never actually sent any transactions to IOTA's network. So just wanted to make that clear. Okay, so this is the outline for the rest of the talk. So first, I'm gonna explain a little bit more about the details of the attack. Ethan's gonna talk about the hash function, and then we're gonna close with some discussion. So first of all, our attack um, that we're gonna describe to you takes place in a setting called multi-sig. Okay, what is multi-sig? Well, the idea behind multi-sig is kind of like the idea behind the two-man rule for a nuclear launch. The idea is that there's two different people with two different keys, and they both need to be present in order to, la to launch the nuclear weapon. Similar idea behind what's known as multi-sig. So what is multi-sig when it applies to cryptocurrencies and payments? Well, what this means is that you need K out of N signatures in order to create a valid payment. So ahead of time, some people lock up some money together. So here, Alice and Bob are creating uh, a payment which locks up some money in a multi-sig payment. And here, they're spending it. And in order to spend this money that they've locked up, they both need to attach their signatures on the transaction. So why multi-sig? Well, multi-sig gives you added security. An attacker has to compromise both keys in order to steal the money, not just one. And you can do cool things like keep the keys in very different places. For example, you could put one in cold storage on a machine that's like not even connected to the internet. Uh, Multi-sig is actually used by many exchanges for security as well. So it's a pretty common technique used in cryptocurrencies. Signatures in IOTA are actually kind of interesting. IOTA uses a signature scheme called WAT, Winternet's One-Time Signatures. Um, IOTA modifies WAT, however, so that signatures are not on the message itself, but actually on the hash of the message. So if you look at this code below, um, what's really important to note here is that before the signing happens, you use a hash function. In this case, this hash function is called curl p27. Um, that means that it's run for 27 rounds. This is IOTA's custom hash function. The signature is done on the hash of the message. And so what this means is that it doesn't even really matter exactly how the signature scheme works because the security of the signature scheme reduces to the security of the hash function. If you can break the hash function, you can forge signatures. And that's exactly what we do in order to conduct our attack. So let me show you how this works. We're gonna show how we can exploit finding collisions in this hash function in order to create unauthorized payments. So here we have Eve and Bob again. And Eve and Bob have locked up some money together in a multi-sig transaction. Eve is going to use our technique to create two bundles, um, one of which which pays a whole bunch of money to her and one of which which pays a whole bunch of money to Bob. And now the key thing here is Eve has created these bundles very, very carefully. They both have the same hash under curl p27. Then Eve is going to give the benign looking bundle to Bob and ask Bob for his signature. Bob checks out the bundle, looks pretty good, pays him a bunch of money, he's happy. He signs the bundle that pays him money. He then sends this back to Eve with his signature. Now Eve, because she's created these bundles in a very special way, can take Bob's signature and just copy it right over onto her malicious bundle. And this is a valid signature um, under curl p27. Or this is a valid signature because they hashed to the same thing under curl p27. Um, then Eve broadcasts, signs the bundle, broadcasts it, and uh, what ends up happening is that a transaction is broadcast to the network that Bob never saw or authorized. Okay, 
So um, let's talk a little bit about exactly what these bundles Eve creates are going to look like. If you sort of look inside a bundle, there are a few different fields that are important, um, one of which is the value field. So this is a bundle that pays four different people, um, but the important things to look at are the amounts that Eve and Bob get, okay? So what Eve is going to do is she's going to take this bundle um, and look at sort of what it looks like in trit representation. So these are the trits of the value field. These are the things that are going to go into the hash function. Um, and she's going to fiddle with some of the trits in a very careful way. So here you can see that in the money that goes to her, the value that goes to her, there's a zero in the 26 trit column. And in the money that goes to Bob, there's a one. So what Eve does is she creates another bundle which is exactly the same as the previous bundle, except the trits are actually swapped. Um, and she creates these bundles in a way such that they have the same hash under curl P27. Um, what this does is this creates a malicious bundle in which Eve gets this large amount of money. Um, in, IOTA ter in USD terms, it's around $2 million, and Bob gets a very small amount of money. Um, and of course, the blue thing is the thing that Bob sees, the red thing is the thing that Eve actually broadcasts. Now, it's important to note that there are some limitations to this technique. Um, you know, we placed these uh, differing tricks in the value fields of the bundles. You could probably put them in different places, but there are some sort of limitations about where you can do this. And uh, now I would like to hand this over to my colleague, Ethan, who's going to talk about the hash function. Thank you. So as Neha just said, um, to do this signature forgery attack, um, we need to create uh, colliding, colliding bundles. Um, so what this, what this means is that um, we have two different uh, messages. They're different. And when you hash them, they hash to the same value. Um, so let's take a closer look at uh, curl P27. Um, curl P27 is uh, built on the sponge construction. Um, some people may be aware of what the sponge construction is, some people may not, um, but it was used uh, in uh, SHA-3. Um, and the important detail is that um, you, when you hash a message, you break it into um, message blocks, um, and then you process the message blocks with this uh, transform function, um, and then your final output is the final uh, transform value. Um, and so the important takeaway here is that the security depends on the security of this transform function. Um, and IOTA's transform function is extremely simple. When we first looked at it, we were like, this is incredibly simple. It's not what you typically see in cryptography. Um, it's basically just the repeated application of a uh, permutation and an S-box. Um, and just by way of example, this is what the S-box inside AES looks like. Um, and this is what the S-box inside curl looks like. Um, now, small S boxes can, can be good. They can, they, they can be used uh, correctly inside cryptography. Um, but if you're only using an S box as your cryptographic element, um, and it's, it's, it, it's tiny like that, um, you're, you're going to have uh, problems. Um, and please ask me more about this in the, in the, in the wrap session, because I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in it. Um, so, as a, as a byproduct of this, I can teach everyone in the room a really simple uh, party trick where they can uh, create colliding bundles for, uh, for curl P. Requires a little bit of computation, but it's doable. So just choose a random bundle. So choose a string of trits. Um, and at the 17th or 26th position, um, uh, copy, that, copy that bundle and just like flip the trit. So, it's exactly the same, except the trit over here is zero, and the trit over here is one. Um, when you hash it, you will uh, likely, you will have a collision with one out of two to the 42 um, uh, probability. It's actually, this is an upper bound, so it's, it'll take you no, no more than this. Um, for people that are unfamiliar with cryptography, this is a very, very low number. Um, I believe, uh, the SHA-1 attack that, that Google did is, was uh, two to the 60, around two to the 60 uh, computations they performed. Um, 
And the uh, Bitcoin network does uh, two to the 80 computations every uh, three seconds around. It's probably gotten a little bit uh, faster since then. Um, but we can actually make this attack uh, much better by being um, clever about how we choose our message. So if we choose our, our message and we don't just randomly sample a message, we can actually get this down to one out of around seven million. So you have a one out of seven million chance of a collision. Um, in cryptographic terms, this is 23-bit collision resistance. Um, but note, a one out of uh, 7 million, 7.6 million um, probability still means you're going to have to try this a couple of times. Um, you can, you know, computers are great at doing things, but you're probably not going to win on your first attempt. So we need some way of taking um, bundles and not really changing their meaning, but just like rerunning the attack. And it turns out that um, IOTA has a uh, field inside of bundles. There's, the field actually occurs multiple times called the tag field. And the tag field is completely meaningless. It has no impact on validity. Um, it, really does, it really does nothing. Um, a lot of people in IOTA will put little messages in the tag field, um, send it around, uh, send, send messages to each other. So you can just totally change the tag field um, and it'll have no, no impact whatsoever. So to do this, uh, to perform this attack enough times to have a high probability of collision, um, we just uh, change the tag field and try again. Uh, my colleague Neha will show a demo of this. Yeah, so this is a demo of um, our attack. So uh, we're running this on an 80 core machine. Um, and what's happening here is we are causing collisions in, um, we're causing different trits in two different places. We have to run this twice. This is all 80 cores going nuts, generating the first collision. It happens really quickly, actually. Um, and now it's working on generating the second collision. So we found the first collision in about 30 seconds using 80 cores. Um, and uh, it's gonna find the second collision any time now. Okay, that took about 23 seconds. On average on 80 cores, it's around 30 seconds um, is what we found running it about 5,000 times. Um, and then what happened here is that it spit out the tags that you needed in order to cause a collision for these two different uh, bundles to make them hash to the same thing. Um, then we ran some validation code on the two bundles, and what we see here is, yes, in fact, they differ in two different places in the value field, and uh, in the first bundle, Bob gets a lot of money and Eve doesn't get very much, and in the second bundle, Eve gets all the money and Bob doesn't get very much, and the two bundles hash to the same value under curl P27. So we disclosed this vulnerability to the developers um, uh, back in July of last year. Um, and uh, over several months, they um, fixed this. Uh, and what they did is they replaced curl um, in, signature, uh, in signature generation with a hash function that they called curl, but curl with a K, um, which is a variant of uh, Ketchak. Um, we note that they haven't entirely removed curl. Um, uh, curl is still used in milestone verification, um, and a version of curl with more rounds is actually used for some other purposes, um, but we're, we don't present any attacks against these uses of curl in this talk. Um, uh, interestingly, uh, after we, um, uh, we disclosed it to them, they fixed it, we, we went public with the vulnerability. Um, they, wrote, they wrote this uh, uh, response to our vulnerability disclosure. Um, and they said curl P was indeed deployed in the open source IOTA protocol code as a copy protection mechanism to prevent bad actors cloning the protocol and using it for nefarious purposes. Um, and then responding to a public statement uh, I made asking if this was a copy protection backdoor in IOTA, they said the answer to the first question is of course yes. Um, so we don't know with, um, we, we can't really know their, in, their intentions. It doesn't look like a backdoor to me, um, but they have at least publicly claimed that this was a, an intentional vulnerability they moved into their code. Um, they argue that they have this uh, closed source component called a coordinator that would prevent um, our attack from working, um, but we can inspect the coordinator as it is uh, closed source, um, but we see no reason why our attack would not work. Um, and it's unclear to us how the coordinator would uh, prevent our attack from functioning. Um, you can actually read their full statement um, here if you, if you wanna go through it, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. So 
we exploited a weakness in curl P27 um, to create chosen message signature forgery attacks. We did this for both um, multi-sig and non-multi-sig. We presented multi-sig here because it really um, fits with our attack scenario, which is one of a chosen message. In multi-sig, one party chooses the message and the other party signs. Um, but we also have this attack working for um, uh, regular uh, non-multi-sig. Um, I think an important takeaway is don't roll your own crypto. Um, hash functions are uh, incredibly hard to design. MD5 was broken, SHA-1 was broken. Um, you know, very smart people working over long periods of time have trouble getting this right. Um, so you really shouldn't do this yourself. Um, and then additionally, this, is a, uh, this was an attack talk, but both me and Neha are really excited about cryptocurrencies um, and what they can do. There's, um, they're, they're doing new interesting things with cryptography, they're sort of pushing security forward. So I invite everyone in the room to um, look at cryptocurrencies, um, uh, try to figure out um, any interesting um, uh, attacks or new ways of using security to help them. They're just a, a, a fascinating um, subject. Uh, we are publishing uh, our paper that describes these crypt analytic attacks. Um, uh, we have proofs of concept on uh, Tangled Curl, and we also are releasing our tools that we use, our cryptanalytic tools, um, and tools that you can also use to verify that uh, um, you can use to create collisions and uh, forge signatures. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I just want to reiterate what the, Ethan said. We're all, both really interested in this, and we think the cryptocurrency community has a lot to learn from the security community. So if you're interested in influencing that, you should come talk to us. Um, so now questions. Yeah. Thanks for the great presentation. I would have a question. Was there oh. any multi-signature code available at the time you did research? I checked the IOTA GitHub, and none of the tooling available at the time was able to do multi-signature. So how could this attack be done in practice? Because so, there was no user tooling so that's an, by that's an, which you could do multi-signature. That's an excellent, excellent question. So you're asking was um, multi-signature code available? Um, and let's see, here we go. So um, er, way earlier than our attack, um, one of the IOTA uh, founders um, tweeted that he had performed the first uh, successful multi-signature transfer in IOTA. Um, they had a library code and instructions for doing this. They were encouraging people to use uh, multi-sig. Um, we looked at the tangle and determining multi-signature transactions from non-multi-signature transactions is, is hard. Um, but we were able to identify at least eight multi-signature transactions in the tangle um, prior to uh, the patch being made available. Yeah, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about maybe a, or describe a scenario for non-multisig that um, that would be adversarial in nature, just so that we could kind of understand better other ways that this exploit could be used that are maybe more practical. Um, and then I also wanted to ask you about the KERL function and just, is that any better and if so, how much? And is it still roll your own problem or, yeah. Sure. Um, so the uh, non-multisig scenario involves um, a party convincing another party to sign a transaction that the first party, Eve, created. Um, there are scenarios in which this could happen. Um, for example, say like hardware wallets, um, but it's not as practical as a multisig, which has like that built-in user flow of sign and uh, create and then ask the other party to sign. Um, your second question, which was about the KERL, curl with uh, K, um, it's uh, the transform function is Ketchek, but a version of Ketchek from 2011. It's probably good. It's not exactly SHA-3, um, but they are doing some slight, slight differences on the sponge construction. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be secure in that setting, um, but it is a little bit different than what you'd get if they had just uh, shoved SHA-3 in there. Great, thank you.